Well, good morning again, everybody, and we are starting this new series called Unforgettable Christmas. You know, some of us in our past have had some Christmases that we would like to forget, right? Anybody had one of those that you're like, ah, is he really coming over again this year? <laughs> really? Is that what's going to happen? This, this is a new series for us. It's going to be for the next three weeks, and uh, Christmas morning we'll have something a little different. But, uh, um, and really we're going to talk about... Um, healing shame, breaking some labels, and today we're going to talk about kind of overcoming some past offenses, you know, things that have kind of gone on in the past. Anybody uh, know anybody who's easily offended? You know, like something that gets done, they're just easily offended, they're just like, you know, like I, so my wife has got her hand as high as she could possibly put it. <laughs> you know, she's like, I know somebody who's easily offended, he's up there right now. <laughs> You know, or, or maybe you're easily offended. Anybody here, maybe they're, or she's easily offended too. Yeah, that's true. You know, but I, and I, and I, and I was, I, I want to say that I was so much worse than what I am now. And, you know, and I look at things and I go, the smallest things could set me off, right? The smallest things, you know, things that were like insignificant, small things that would just set me off. So here's an example, you know, uh, driving down the freeway, cruising along, let somebody in. You know, give them, let them in, you know, they put, you know, they don't wave, right? You know, like it's obvious, we're sitting, they, don't, they, they don't even put their hand out. They don't wave, nothing, they don't, hey, they're like in the rear, you know, kind of the, ooh, why did I let you in? You're not even thankful. Or, or when you hold the door for somebody, you hold it open for them, and they just, you're like, hi, thank you. Next time, yeah, shove it into them, right? You know, that's how you feel. <laughs> you know, or how about with somebody that just keeps talking on their phone or checking it all the time, just nonstop, you know, they just pick it up and, and they, and they do one of these numbers. Now I have to be careful because I, because I'll walk off the stage, you know, we just, do are like, doo -doo -doo, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, but uh, isn't that what happens though? Is th those are like the insignificant things. What about, what about the tech now? Because there's some new tech stuff out there. You know, you're going through Instagram or you're on, on Facebook. Why wasn't I invited to that party? What happened? They must not like me. You get offended, right? You're like, hey. Or, or you, you, you invite somebody to something, right? And, and they look, you know, because now on Facebook, you can see that they saw it. They look, they don't even respond. You know, they don't put maybe, they don't put no. They don't put yes, and you go, mm, that's a no. That's what that is. That is a no, by the way. If somebody doesn't answer, that's a no. Or how about this? Some of you guys, what happens if you send a text message and they're slow to respond? Like days slow, though. Like you send a message, you were texting, you were texting back and forth, it was going good, then all of a sudden, it stopped. Like, and then all of a sudden, they go back to you three days later, they go, Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I got busy. For three days? <laughs> what happened? And, and see, that's what happens to us, though, is we get, we get, so, we, we, we get so offended easily. What did I do? What happened? What, what's going on? What's wrong with me? Or, you know, and, 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 and the holidays, it changes a little bit, too. You know, the holidays, the same person doesn't ever bring food to dinner. It's always the same person. Yeah. It's my wife. My wife's like, I don't cook, so I ain't bringing no food. <laughs> your relative comments on how you raise your kids. Every time they come over, they stop by and they go, you know, if you did this, 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 and this, your kids act so much better. Really? You don't think that we know that? You don't think that we know that they're little spoiled, rotten brats? We get it. We spoil them. <laughs> you know, I, 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 <laughs> that's just my response. I know. You know, we know that our kids are spoiled rotten brats because we do spoil them, you know, and, and see, we try and make up for the things as parents that, or I, I try and make up for the things as parents that um, I always feel that uh, I didn't get as a kid, right? So I give, I go, I didn't get these things, so I give and give and give, and we actually do a disservice, a whole different message, but we do a disservice to our children when we do that. What about the serious offenses, though? What about the serious ones, the, the, the betrayal and the lies and the abuses. See, Christmas is a joyful time, right? It's a, you know, we look at this and it's supposed to be a joyful time, but sometimes we end up being brought back into, uh, you know, maybe a family or a relative shows up at the party and you're like, that person has abused me for years. 
that person hurt me. That person lied to me all my life. And there's hurts. And there's things that just continue to resonate. There's been Christmas dinners destroyed because of statements that were made at a table. Families divided because one person doesn't like this person or doesn't like that person. You know, relationships have been ended and friendships have been ended because of something said over the Christmas table. And it's made it to where we want to forget that Christmas. It hasn't been a joyous time. It hasn't been a time of celebration. It hasn't been, man, God, you're doing amazing things and we're so thankful for your presence. No, it's been, God, why? What, what, what happened? Why? And see, a lot of times we get to that point where on Christmas morning we open our gifts with a closed heart. We, we, you know, especially a closed heart towards God. And we start opening the gifts as if it's just a present that we're just going to use as a thing instead of going really, you know, we, we celebrate this. And Christmas gifts, you guys got to remember something is that we've kind of gone a little bit extravagant. I think the average person this year is going to get $482 spent on them in Christmas this year. That's the average. That's what CNN said. And, I mean, they lie, so who knows. Anyway, <clears throat> you know, they, they predicted somebody else to win the presidency. But, but the thing is, is that when you look at this and you see, what, you see what's out there and you see what happens and you see what's going on and, and, and really we've taken Christmas and we've turned it into something that really, you know, back when Jesus was born, they showed up and granted, I want to just remind you is that we're celebrating Christmas at this time and we're celebrating the birth of our Savior. But he really wasn't born on December 25th. Okay? We don't know his exact birth date, but it wasn't December 25th. But we, it's a representation of his birth. It's a date. You know, anybody, uh, my daughter was born on December 27th, my oldest daughter. And, uh, and the reason why I bring this up is because it's really hard to celebrate your birthday two days after Christmas. You know, really? It, it, you know, it's like, she goes, oh, all the Christmas gifts. Well, we kind of spoiled you for Christmas. So it's really hard to give you something right now. Let's celebrate in July. Let's do your birthday in July. It's kind of like the same thing here, right? It's, kind of, it's like really hard to get you really close to Easter. Let's do it in December. So, and so anyway, but the, when, the, when, the, when they showed up, they showed up with three gifts. And each one of those gifts was significant and meaningful. And see, for us, we don't open our gifts as if they're significant and meaningful. They needed those gifts. They were things that they were going to need. And so for us, we go, where's my iPhone? Where's my iPad? Where's the stereo? Where's the Bluetooth thing? Where's this at? Where's that? Instead of going, what is it that I need and what is going to be significant and going to be useful for me? And we, and we don't look at it that. And we have our hearts so closed towards God that we're, we're trying to find it and go, hey, where's, where's all the toys? Where's all the possessions? The stuff. Instead of the things that we need. And so, well, we have this time, this celebration. We end up celebrating the birth of our Savior, the birth of Christ, while hating somebody close to us. Enjoying God's grace while extending no grace to our friends and family. You know, we, 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 we spend this time and we go, I want to, I'm going to enjoy this grace that God has given, this freedom that he's given me, and then we just don't even extend it to our own, to the family that's closest to us, the people that live next to us, the people that live in our neighborhood, or, you know, and we just, and we get to this point, and we go, somebody hurt me, that's it, it's over. Never again will we talk about it. Now, let me tell you, I, uh, I, I and I've already told you, is that I'm a, I, I get angry fast. You know, I just do. I, I've, in the past, I've, you know, I, I'm driving along one time, <clears throat> Somebody cut me off. This happened a couple years ago, so it's not a recent thing. And for some of you, you've heard this story. Because cause uh, they flipped me off when they cut me off. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I was like, hey, wait a minute here. And I turned around in my car and I started following them. And then when I pulled up next to them to kind of say, hey, <laughs> remember me? The guy you just flipped off? And they looked at and they were in a tender of the church. <laughs> And they looked at me, and I looked at them, and I, you know, they kind of gave me the, oh, thanks. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and see, the thing is, is that it made me confront myself because of the anger that I was carrying, that I had to turn around and go, it, it, it's, those are the times, and so now, when people cut me off, 
I don't turn around. I just keep going. I get really angry in the car, but, you know, I, I don't turn around now. I just, you know, it, it's, I, I, I try and get like, you know, is it Elsa that just lets it go? Right? I just try to get to that point. I just, I'm trying to get to that point. I don't know which one it is, you know, whatever. It, yeah, okay. So my progress, and so here, you know, <laughs> if you're taking notes with us, you're following along our app, whatever, is uh, your life is too short and your calling is too big to be offended. It, it is. You know, I, how many times have I, how many times have I if, I, if I continued to respond that way, would I make it to where people would, would lose this relationship with the church or lose this relationship with God because of something I did, the fence that I, that I put onto them. So really, your life is too short and your calling is too big. Small people hold big grudges. Small people do. You know, you're just holding this big grudge over nothing a lot of times. You know, if you look at Proverbs 19.11, it says, A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Now, overlooking an offense doesn't mean that you pretend that it didn't happen. You know, that doesn't mean like uh, somebody does something, you know, somebody goes through Walmart and they steal a whole bunch of stuff. That doesn't mean that you just overlook that. You know, one of the things, years ago, my child, uh, Haley, who's running around here someplace, we were at, we were at Target one time, and uh, we're going through Target, and she asked for a DVD. And we were like, no, we're not going to get that DVD. That's just not, uh, we're not interested in that one. You know, we don't want this. And so we get outside of the store, you know, the alarm goes off when we go off and everything, when we go out the door, you know, because you, you and, and we get out to the, we paid and everything, and we get out and get out to the car, and as we're unloading everybody and put everybody in the car, underneath, you know, the flap where you put your kid in, you know, the, the underneath the, the, the seat, yeah, the seat, you know how they've got the little flat to protect your, your, your kid's butt from being, you know, bruised from the bars that go across, um, you know, they, uh, there was a DVD there. And I looked at the DVD and I said, I really didn't want this DVD. And I, and, 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 and I was left with a choice at that point, right? I could be really mad at my child. And, I could, and, and, and so instead, what I did is I, I, I looked at her and I said, I am, I, I said, why did you do this? And she said, she said, Dad, I didn't. I said, oh, no, you did. <laughs> I didn't put it in the cart. And Mom didn't put it in the cart. And nobody hid it underneath the seat. I said, but we could be easily offended by it and upset. And hold on to it forever. Instead, we walked back into the store, and I made her walk in there with me. And I made her walk up to the customer service desk and hand it back and go, I'm sorry I took this. And they were like, no, 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 we're waking you up for that. And she goes, no, I'm, I, I took this. And I said, I walked out of the store with that and not paid for it. I know I didn't pay for it. And I told them, and they argued with me about paying for the DVD. <laughs> They're like, you paid for that. I said, no, I didn't. I said, I didn't pay for it. But now I have to because I've walked out with it. I said, it's mine. It's my DVD. And, and so, but, you know, my anger, I guess, shifted from her to them. But, you know, the reality is, is that <laughs> we have to make this conscious decision to let it go. We have to make this conscious decision to let it go, and, 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 and it can be a form of forgiveness. <clears throat> if you look at, if you, uh, so if you go into, if you open up and you start going back into the history, and you look at the Hebrew word for overlook, and it really means to pass over. To overlook means to pass over that. You know, anybody ever heard of Passover? To overlook. They overlook the offenses that, you know, God passes over these houses to overlook the offenses that they had committed against him. You know, and, uh, you know, if you look at, if you, if, 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 whenever anyone has offended me, I try to raise my soul so high that the offense cannot reach it. That's the Rene Descartes. And you can't read that through the eagle, but that's, I didn't come up with that, somebody else did. You know, you know life, is, life is too short and your calling is too great. You've got to get over it. You, you just can't keep holding on to it. You've got to move forward. Now, with God's help, we can get over almost anything. And see, what I want to do is there's smaller and heavier offenses. And what I really want to do is I want to be able to easily get over certain things, just be able to step away from them and just go, I'm done with it. I'm getting over being easily offended. And so that's my prayer for you. I'm getting over being easily offended. So obviously I'm not doing these PowerPoints anymore because I've never gotten like all that, you know, <laughs> Ephesians 4 to always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. 
Make allowance. You're not perfect, right? You know, make allowance for one another. You, it, it, and see, the problem is, is that we're expecting the people that are closest to us to be perfect. We expect those that are to be that live in the same house to be perfect. We're expecting those that are that that come to show up at our dinners and to, to be, be absolutely perfect. And see, here's the thing: is that years and years ago, Jesus didn't go eat with the perfect people. He didn't go share a meal with perfect people. What he did is he went to those that were sinners. He sat at a tax collector's house. He went and, and, and he spent time with people that were far from God. And he said, you, he said, stop doing that stuff. But he wasn't offended. He got more offended by those that considered themselves to be holy. They would walk in and go, what are you doing allowing her to touch your feet? What are you doing, allow, what are you doing sharing a meal with them? And, you know, or showing up at the temple and flipping tables over. That tells you that's a valuable option one day. We have to make allowance. You're not perfect. See, the thing is, is that we judge others by their actions and ourselves by our intentions. We judge others by their actions. This is what you did. Instead, and with ourselves, we go, oh, I meant to do this. Instead of judging everybody the same way, we judge, we have these different standards. You know, the worst thing I hate, so I'll ask the question, because, you know, somebody's around me on their phone, and I go, who are you talking to? What you doing? They go, I'm taking notes. And really, they're texting with somebody, especially during my staff meeting. Oh. <laughs> so frustrating. But is it, is it really lying, or is it the phone? Which one offended me? Which one, you know, and so we, we get really questionable about it. Is it the actual offense, or is it the, what caused the offense? You know, start thinking about things and start looking at what's happened. You know, we go, I want others to give me the benefit of the doubt. Do we do the same? Do we give the benefit of the doubt to others? We want others to give us the benefit of the doubt, but do we give others the benefit of the doubt? Or do we just hold on to it? <sighs> you know, some of us, we know that it's going to be a bad day. Right? You ever get up in the morning and just go, today's going to be bad. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get enough sleep. Maybe, <laughs> whatever it is. You know, maybe today you might be distracted. You know, whatever's causing you to do stuff. And you just know that it's, gonna, it's not going to be a great day. Oh, I'm going to get bad news today. I know it. And you're just kind of preparing yourself right at the start of the morning. You get up, you don't even, you don't even get a chance to put your feet on before you go, oh, today's going to be horrible. That's how we've turned Christmas for some of us. You know, today's going to be horrible. Christmas is going to be horrible. Instead of really turning it into the greatest joy that it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, anybody, you're upset because you're late to go get two things at the store? i got to go to the store. I, gotta go, I forgot something, like this morning. This is a perfect example. I wrote myself a note that I had to go get some stuff for the coffee shop. We ran out yesterday. We had an event, a uh, rental that was here yesterday. And I wrote myself a note. And, uh, and I go uh, at 10 o'clock. So it's 10 o'clock that I, I go, ah, oh, i got to go get stuff or nobody's going to be, everybody's going to be mad. There's no coffee. Uh, you know. And so I drive over to Smart and Final at 10. So the service starts at 10.30. You guys know that, right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I drive over to Smart and Final and I get in. I get in the store, and the first thing I do is I look over to the register, because, you know, that's how it is. I look over, and I go, ugh, because there's like 12 people in line, one cashier. I felt like I'd walked into Walmart. I go, ugh, it's supposed to be easier than there. And I get my stuff, and um, I look at my watch. I go, it's 1010. I go, you know, I, I said, here's the positive. I said, they can't really start without me, you know. I said, <laughs> I, I said so, I mean, they could start, but they'd be some dead time if I don't get back soon. And uh, so I, I, I get the stuff that I need, and I, and I get back, and I get up there, and as I walk up to the line, it's, I, I, I'm standing in this line of 10 or 12 people, and all of a sudden, every one of the registers opens up. They, they, like the, they made the magical call, because they ding, 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 ding. And I walk out, you know, and, and as I walk out, I just go, you know, man, I wasn't upset. I just knew that I had to go do it. I, it was one of those things, though, I, should, I was like, man, I was upset with myself that I forgot to write it down. See, sometimes, or that I wrote it down and didn't pick it up this morning while I was already at the store. We get so upset over things that maybe are our fault. Maybe you ever realize that? We get so upset over things that maybe we caused. That, that we're the, that we made the issue. I forgot something this morning. 
And so now there's a line, there, the, you know, every, red, every light was red, all of those things. It's my fault. Why would I be upset with a cashier who can't ring? In fact, when I got there, I get into the, I get into the register, and as I was talking, and I, said, and I was talking to her, I said, hey, I said, uh, so it's going to be a long day just because it's the holidays, I said, but don't let people get to you. Merry Christmas. And I just walked out. Instead of being upset about the whole situation, it's just being able to talk to somebody and realize, and sometimes it, it's our fault. You know, I, uh, I, I go time, and sometimes I, I, I write a journal, and I take it online, and, and I do it, I don't take it online, but I, I write it in digital <laughs> format. <laughs> um, <laughs> might be a bad day if you guys got a hold of that. But, uh, but uh, so, I, I, as I, was, I, so I go back and I review it a lot of times. And I go back, especially like different scripture. I do it, I, I, I like having a searchable reference. And that's the reason why I do it on my iPad. And I can go back to it and I just put in a key word and it brings up those things. So I put in a verse a lot of times and I can go back and I can, the last time I read a certain verse. And sometimes I'll put something in and I'll go back to it and I go, man, I was in a bad place when I wrote that. I just was. You know, there's sometimes that when we're going through and we're doing things, we're just in a bad place. And that's why the scripture is so amazing because it's alive. It changes depending upon in your circumstances where you're at. I read the what you know, when I write when I read the scripture, I always put you know like when I journal, I put what I read, what it meant to me at that time, and what I'm going to use it for, and and those are things. And so always I go back and when I reference that stuff, I, I always look back and I go, what was I getting out of it? And and the word speaks to me so differently depending upon the mood I'm in or where I'm at. And I and I just encourage you to just really take this time and. If you don't keep a, a journal, then I would say start keeping a journal, especially if you're in the Word at all, trying to get to know it at all. But I'd, sometimes I'd look back at it and i go, man, that's a pastor I've never met. Because that's how I feel sometimes as I've read some back, back through some of that stuff. I go, I just don't even know that guy. I, what happened there? But the thing is, it's not all about us. It's not all about your mood. The bad mood isn't about you sometimes. It's how we like to get. Careless driving isn't about, you know, isn't about you. We, we, get, we take all these things and we turn it into us. <laughs> you know, your wife having PMS isn't about you unless you ask them. Then it is about you. <laughs> What's upset? You are. You know, I'm like, wait a minute here. Well, you know, wonder what you're going through. I'll tell you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're mine. Maybe, a, you know, and, and see, the thing is, is that instead of being offended by, why don't we show compassion for her? When somebody's in pain or whenever something's going on, instead of being offended by what's going on, compassion for them. Life is too short, and our calling is too great to continue to hold those grudges. Life is too short, and our calling is too great. The other thing is, we have to say, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting over being easily offended, okay? That's what we have to say. That's, that was her, your, your, I'm getting over the big offenses. It just throws me off, all, the whole thing. <laughs> I, they're, they're, they're cute and great. I, I love this. Let me, let me see if I can focus. Let me, take a, let me get some of this church feel going here. Uh, so I'm getting over the big offenses, right? We're working on getting rid of the little offenses. I'm getting over the big offenses. Uh, we have to acknowledge. And then, and then we have to start going, unless there's significant hurts, because sometimes there's significant hurts, but... But everything else we can start moving, and, and, you know, but we have to acknowledge. And I know that when we look at this and we go, some of them it's just not easy to do. It's not easy to get over big offenses. It's not easy getting over an uncle that's abusive or a parent that's abusive or, or, or somebody that continues to belittle you or somebody who thinks that you're not worth anything. It's not easy to get over those things. But we have to get over them because you have to look at this. And I tell you guys all the time, when, when, when God comes down and he speaks to Gideon, and Gideon is inside of a, he's, number one, they're hiding. They're, 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 they're in a cave. And he's in there and he's using the wrong tool to do a job that he didn't, you know, he's in there and he's thrashing wheat in a wine press. Okay? Doesn't even sound right. You're like, why are you using that? And see, here's the thing. Is that you ever had anybody who goes, hey, hand me that hammer so I can use it to, 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 to take this screw out. It's the wrong job. Or it's the wrong tool for the job. You need a drill or you need a screwdriver but we'll use a hammer anyway. We'll rip it out and destroy everything that's in the way. This is what we do in our life. This is what happens all the time. Or, yeah, guys are really good about this. They need a hammer for something? Hey, just give me a rock. 
It's going to be something hard. I'll pound it in with that. That's what happens all the time. And see, the thing is, is that when you look at, so Gideon is doing something, he's using the wrong tool for the job, and God comes down and goes, strong and mighty warrior is what he calls him. Gideon goes, you got the wrong dude. I'll go get my brother. Or I'll go get somebody else from another family. Because it ain't us. Because the, we're the smallest clan, and I'm the least of that. And he goes, no, 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 I'm talking to you. You strong and mighty warrior. And so for you women in there, if he was speaking to somebody else, he'd say, my strong and mighty princess. Or warrior. Or, you know, Xena, or whatever her name is, or whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever. But the reality is, is that even though sometimes we're doing something wrong, using the wrong tools, is that our, our Father in Heaven looks down on us and goes, that is my, my, my mighty princess or my, my mighty warrior. And, and, and the thing is, is that even no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what sin we're doing, no matter what's going on, is that our Father still finds favor and still looks at us and goes, I'm going to do something big with you. I'm going to take you and I'm going to... And see, the thing is, is that we allow offense to hold us back from actually doing that. We go, oh, they don't like me or this or whatever it is. And that instead of doing what God has asked us to do, we get held up in it. We go, I can't move forward because I don't have the right tools for it. Or I can't go in this direction because I'm not the right person for it. And the reality is, is that God has given you, he says, go with the tools I've already given you. You are my strong and mighty warrior. We get lost. <sighs> Rehearse or release. You ever, you ever go when somebody walks in the door? You know, if you if you ever been to a big family reunion? Anybody in here been to a big family reunion? And you go, what am I going to say to so and so? How am I going to talk to them? You know, you know, how am I going to have this conversation? What am I going to say? And you, you'll think about this for like a week. You're like, oh man. Or maybe, maybe you started thinking about it after last Christmas. You're like, what am I going to say this next year? What am I going to tell them? You've been holding that all the whole time. You're just going, what am I going to say? How am I going to deliver this? What am I going to, you know, you're going to walk up to them and just strangle them, <laughs> you know. So you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been holding on to it. You've been rehearsing instead of releasing. Sometimes we just need to release it. Colossians 3.13, make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Remember that. How can I forgive them? They hurt me. They abused me. They abused somebody that I, I love. They hurt somebody. How? How do I forgive them? How do I, how do I know that, that they're not lying to me now? How do I, you know, I, they cheated on me. I'm betrayed. Those are all things that happen. That's not the choice that you, you see, the, the thing is, is, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is that when we get offered forgiveness, it's like dumping hot coal on their head. It allows the vengeance to be the Lord's. Man. So imagine anything that you wanted to do somebody. How much worse do you think God can do it to them? You know, just imagine how much more. Allow the vengeance to be his. Hmm. You know, you look at it and go, well, that person, he cheated on me. Adultery is grounds for divorce. It's also grounds for forgiveness. You have to look at this and you have to, how are you looking at the situation? What are you looking at? What are you doing? And if we go back and whenever anyone has offended me, I try to raise my soul so high that the offense cannot reach it. Things are holding you back. What's the offense that's holding you back? Making it to where you're not doing what God asked you to do. What is it that what is it that's holding you, making it to where you can't actually do the simple thing or the simple task that God has asked you to do? Because you're I'm the smallest. I'm the most hurt. Whatever it is. You're making it to where God can't actually utilize you and use you. 
you've made it to where this point where the tool, somebody's using the wrong tool to do a job because the tool is probably you and you're supposed to be there and you're supposed to be taking care of it. But the wrong tool now is doing something else. I'm not rehearsing it, I'm releasing it. So of holding on to that offense, release it. Get over it. Let it go. Move on. Look at what happened to Joseph. If you go into the Bible and you look at what happens to Joseph, <clears throat> what was meant for evil was used for good. With God's help, we can get over it. <clears throat> if you start changing some books and things and you start going in some different direction, what holds you back can make you stronger. If you start looking at things, what holds you back can make you stronger. What hurt me in the past can change you to be more like Christ. What weighed you down for years can make it to where it no longer holds you down. These are all things that you go, if I'm over it, I'm over it. I'm moving forward, and I'm doing something different. I'm doing life different. You know, and, and see, the, the thing is, is that we, a lot of times we get to this point, and we look for forgiveness, and we go, you know, if, if, I forgive, if I forgive them, they think that it's okay to do it again. Or if I forgive them, it, it's, they, they, they think that I'm weak. And see, here's the reality, though, is when you forgive, it doesn't excuse what they did to you. It frees you from what they did. That forgiveness frees you. It gives you that ability to walk away and go, I'm done. I, I, I don't even have to worry about that anymore. And it just takes that burden off your shoulders. The problem is, is that we forget that life is too short to continue to hold on to those offenses. We have this huge calling. I mean, I look around the room and I go, I, I see so many different people in this room that have had, uh, as I've talked to you and I've interacted with you and I've heard different things of going on and I go, God has an amazing calling for so many people in this room. What's holding them back from doing it? What's holding them back from actually stepping out and doing what God asked them to do? You know, I have conversations and I go, man, are you, are, are, what happened? Why aren't you moving forward? And I go, oh, it's just not the right time. But I can promise you that while Gideon was, <laughs> while, while he was down there and, he, and he's thrashing this wheat, it wasn't the right time for him. They were under attack. And I promise you that when Mary and Joseph were traveling through the desert, it wasn't the right time for her to go into labor. I promise you, they did not want to deliver a child in a manger. And so when you start thinking about this and you start looking at it and go, that offense or whatever is holding you back, is it preventing you from doing what God asked you to do? And, and in this case, Jesus was the Savior. Where would we be without him? We're lost. All these things that we go, you know, earlier we sung a song called Chain Breaker. The healer. The pain taker. The one who breaks these chains. Just rips things down. They aren't talking to you. They aren't talking about you doing it. It's Jesus that does that. They weren't ready to be traveling across the desert. You, you ever thought about, hey, hey, babe, I know you're nine months pregnant. Let's go for a walk. <laughs> a long walk. Where are we going to stay at tonight? I don't know. I have no idea. But we got to go. And you start walking along and you get there and you get to the end. You go, hey, there's a place. We might be able to do this. You go knock on the door, and they go, oh, we're full. And see, here's the thing. They could have been easily offended then, right? You know, because, hey, my wife is pregnant. She's getting ready to have a child. Kick one of them out of the room. Just kick one out. Make them go sleep with the animals. But it doesn't say that in there, right? It doesn't say that in the Bible. It doesn't say, hey, they got really pissed and, and, and said, go, you know, they started yelling at the innkeeper. No. You know what they did? So they were humble, and they forgave, and they said, well, you got any place? And he goes, yeah, I got the barn. Will that work for you? I guess it's going to have to work. 
You know, I, and, and see, that's the thing, though. They weren't offended. It never once comes up and say they took offense. Could you imagine? How, how mad would you be as the father right there? You'd be ready to kick the door off the hinges, right? You'd be like, we're going to do this right here on the doorstep then. They didn't do that. They went down to the manger and delivered a Savior. Not offended. Just enjoyed. For you, what is holding you back? What has kept you standing at that innkeeper's door going, you're going to let me in? What is it? Because the reality is it's time to move on. It's time to start doing what God asked you to do. And maybe that's going down to the manger and delivering a baby. It could be that you need to go and maybe you're called to start a ministry. Maybe you're called to start a church. You know, I didn't feel that. You know, like, well, I felt that. I didn't feel it originally. When I walked in, I go, I'm going to be a youth pastor forever. I don't even like adults. <laughs> and then it changed. Now I don't like kids. <laughs> you know, but, but the reality is, is, what is God trying to do? You know, and sometimes he's moving and sometimes he's doing something. But, you know, we don't look at those things and we go, oh, I'm, I'm never going to do this. And then, and, and then all of a sudden, God speaks to you through his word. God speaks to you through, you know, even if you're reading, you know, like I read a lot of church books and I'm, I'm just reading through, you know, like I, one of my favorite authors is Mark Batterson. And as I'm just reading through some stuff and I just go, fear holds us back so often. Fear and offense. And we just, and we don't move forward with what God has asked us to do. And we get so offended and we get so scared of failure all of us have, have experienced failure in our life and if you're a guy and if you've ever asked anybody out you kind of know what it's like to be told no you know they ask you and they go it used to be a famous line of me they go what happens if they tell you no i go i've been told no several times i said i get over it and i move forward you know look at the, the light switch or the light bulb and you look at thomas edison he goes i've 1100 found 1100 ways not to create a light bulb that's what i found But failure can't let us hold us back, and those offenses can't hold us back. But that's where we're at. We allow those things to hold us back. It makes it to where we're lost and not doing what God has asked us to do. We have to make the change. And one of the verses, you know, let's see if we go back into there, and it's just in, in Colossians 3.13, it says, Make allowance for each other's faults. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. I want to stop here for a second, and I want you to do something. I want you to close your eyes. I just want you to, want you to think about, I want you to just kind of think about your past a little bit. And for some of you, you don't probably have to go too deep, or you don't have to go too far, because I want you to think about the last time that you hurt somebody. Maybe it was unintentional. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe, maybe you were angry. But I want you to just I want you to just think. Or maybe somebody hurt you or but I just want you to look at your life and I want you to think about all the past offenses that you've also had too. Just think of all the the things that you've done. The maybe you stole some candy one time. Maybe you stole some candy a lot of times. Maybe you maybe you cheated on your taxes. I just want you to start thinking about it and start thinking and go. Maybe, maybe you had a car accident, or maybe you stole dad's car, or mom's car, or whatever it is. You know you've been forgiven of that. Maybe you don't feel forgiven. And that's why it's hard to forgive others. But you've been forgiven of that. Those hurts, and those pains, God doesn't have a record of those anymore. We hold them. We carry them, but God doesn't. If you read 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, New life is offered and the old is gone. You have that new life. As a believer in Christ, you have that new life. We just need joy. 
those offenses are gone. Now we're called to forgive others that way. To have this blank slate. Not that it didn't happen, but it did. But to be able to forgive and move forward. Let's pray about that. Let's pray right now. Father, give me the courage. Give us the courage to forgive others as you have forgiven us. To take away the animosity and the hurt that we carry. The pain. Help us. Give us the strength to be able to, to, to move forward. Not to hold back and not to not to be not to allow a hurt or an offense to to prevent us from celebrating joy or moving forward with your plan for our lives. To travel down the path that you've asked us to go. To love one another. Father, I know that we've allowed little things to hurt us and, and to prevent us from having the relationships that you wanted us to. We continue to hide from what you've asked us to do. We, we run, and yet you continue to love us. You continue to give us grace. You continue to forgive. You give us so much grace. There's a song out there that says it's like drops of the ocean. It just keeps going. Father, we're thankful. And we ask that you give us the strength to be able to do that with others. That strength to be able to do it how we do it with our children. When our children come to us and they ask for forgiveness, it's easy to forgive and to allow it to be easy with everyone. And even if they don't ask, allow us to forgive so that we can move forward. Father, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for this season. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for grace. It's in your son, Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.